Hey everybody, welcome back to another Beard Guys Starfield video. Today we are going to be doing a step-by-step -step build along of a brand new ship from the ground up. I want to build a new Class B ship. This is one I had built before that does me pretty well, but what I'm going to do is, I think there's some improvements we can make to this. I'm going to strip this down to its bare bones and just keep a couple of components, and then we're going to build a whole new ship completely from scratch. I did a shipbuilding tips and tricks video the other day. Do go and check that out if you've not seen it already. That's got loads of handy little quality of life controls and advice for beginner shipbuilding in Starfield. But I thought a good follow-up to that would be just going through the whole shipbuilding process completely from the top. So we're going to do most of this build at an outpost. If you're not familiar with outpost building, there is this thing called the landing pad with ship builder that you can build at any of your outposts. It's actually quite cheap to build. It just needs iron, beryllium, zero wire and adaptive frame, all very easy to get. And when you build one of these, you can see we've already got one here. You can land your ship at your outpost. And not only that, you can use this little console on, there's actually one at either end, but you can use this one here. And this lets you do all of the stuff that you can do at any ship technician around the world. This is particularly useful though because different ship technicians different ship salespeople around the game sell different components but this ship builder if you use the outpost one and build from there then it gives you doesn't give you everything available but it gives you the biggest assortment of bits in any one location particularly structural pieces which are mostly cosmetic things for adding shape and structure it has basically all of them available from all the different builders you can see we've got hope tech Deimos, and there's all the different ones you'll find them in there it's also got a really good selection of habs you'll find habs from all of the different manufacturers available at this outpost builder it doesn't have all the habs there are some specialist ones like the two by twos and the three by threes that you'll only find at the specific shipyards but it does have a very good selection of them and then stuff like grav drives and everything else it's got an okay selection so again there's some specialist bits of gear you will need to go to different ship technicians if you wish to acquire them if you want to know exactly what you can buy at each different ship vendor then there's a fantastic reddit post that I'll link in the comments below by a user called Post Volta that's got a great resource telling you all the different stuff that is available from each different place. And there's another fantastic Reddit post that I use to help me figure out which habs we're going to use for a particular build. And that's by a user called Stalvia who's got pictures linked of all of the different hab interiors. So you can go through that, find the ones you like the look of, and then go and build them. Because it's a bit of a pain when you're actually building a ship, you can't preview it while you're mid build you can't place a hab and then look inside and see how it looks you have to confirm the build which means you have to pay for everything you have to make the ship not have any errors so you can actually complete the build and then walk in there manually and look at it which is a real pain so uh, having a resource at these pictures is very very useful so what i would recommend doing when you're going to do a new ship build is to grab something to base it off this is obviously something i've built before but you could pick any ship just go and capture one you could use your old frontier that i've you can see i've extended and shoved some cargo on but you can find any of these ships in the game you can go and steal a pirate ship here's a varun ship that I've stolen you could go and use this as the basis of your new ship it's quite a good idea to do even if you're not going to keep the structure of this ship it can still be quite a good idea to start with something like this because you can strip everything off you don't want but you could still keep the reactor you could keep the grav drive you could keep the shield generator and stuff like reactors and generators can be worth 50 60 70 thousand credits to buy new so it can save you a lot of money by reusing ship parts from existing ships once we're done with this build I'll put a full part list in the description down below as well as the cost of everything if you did have to buy it from new ours is going to be a bit cheaper because i'm going to reuse the reactor that we've got here and the grav drive and probably the shield and maybe the weapons so we are going to save a lot of money when i do this but i will put the full cost of building this down in the description below and let you know at the end of the video as well so once you've got your ship that you're going to build off of what i would recommend doing is figuring out what parts you might want that are from other shipyards that you can't get from your outpost so from looking at some of the images of different habs, I've decided there's some Hope Tech ones that I want to get. I particularly want the big mess hall from Hope Tech, which isn't available in the Outpost Shipbuilder. And there's also two other pieces from Hope Tech that I want as well, which are called a cross brace and a spine. And these are basically corridors, so you can sort of force the routing a bit between areas. Because one of the main issues I have with this ship that I find a bit annoying is that inside it's a bit of a pain to move around. You have all these habs down here, and then there's a ladder kind of coming down from here into there, 
which is a bit awkward. This has nice stairs in this two level cockpit, which is great, but some of the routing is a bit annoying. So we're going to improve on that using some techniques you can do with corridors and spines and hopefully build something that's a bit like this, but a bit better and a bit easier to get around. So what I'm going to do first is quickly nip over to Hope Tech and buy those bits that I want, bring them back here, and then I'm going to run through a list of our goals of what we want from this ship before we start building. So here we are in Hope Town. We're going to buy some stuff for our ship. You can talk to this guy or you can go into the Hope Tech office and talk to the salesperson in there. Apparently the salesperson there does sell some extra pieces that you can't get from this guy, but I think this guy sells the bits that we need. So we're just going to stay out here because we only need one or two pieces. By the way, I'm doing this on Xbox, so the controls are going to be slightly different for PC. Most of them are written along the bottom of the screen anyway, but if you're unsure about any of the controls, then just leave a comment and I'll let you know what the PC equivalent is. So for Xbox, just move your cursor off to the side here. You can see at the bottom we press A to add. This is going to bring up the list of stuff that we can buy from this ship technician. And what we're looking for is all under HABs. So I want the Hope Tech Mess Hall. This is one I looked for earlier. And we want the 2 by 3 which is this one here. Because I want to base this build off of this bridge. This is a two-story bridge and it has a staircase that goes between the upper level and the bottom level. And what it means is you can have a ship build that doesn't have any ladders in it or has minimal ladders if you want to reduce that because they can be a bit annoying. You can boost up and down ladders to get around more quickly, but they look a bit ugly and they kind of get in the way and some people like a no ladder build. And we're going to try maybe not a no ladder build today, but I think we will try and keep them as minimal as possible. And this is a really nice way to have two levels, but avoid having ladders to do that. So you can see it's got three connectors off the back. So we need to build off of that. The ones with the little arrow poking in are the two in the middle, and that's where the doorways are going to go. You couldn't have a doorway on the left or the right here. These are just connecting points. So we do need to have a doorway in the middle. You could have a single piece there and cosmetic bits on the side or whatever, but we're going to stick a three wide there because I quite like the look of this mess hall. We've got a similar piece in here at the moment. This is the Nova Galactic mess hall, but the Hope Tech one I think looks a bit better. So we're going to grab that and chuck that in this spot. So what we can do is just delete our Nova Galactic mess hall, grab our Hope Tech one, which is just here, and just shove that in where we remove that piece and then pop the nose back on the front and that ship should be fine to fly. The other things we wanted to grab were the Hope Tech cross brace and the Hope Tech spine. By the way, when you've deleted pieces, when you're still in a ship builder, you can see it here. So I could still put that big back if I wanted. It just shows you the pieces that you've deleted. So these are the spines and the cross braces that we want. I don't really know how many of these we might need or want for our ship. So what I'm going to do is just shove a load of these onto this thing and then we'll just fly them back and we can use what we want and delete the rest. You can select multiple things and move them at once. Here you see if on Xbox, you can tap RB. We can select multiple like this, grab them and move them around like this. You could also duplicate multiple things. So if I select all of these and then hit Y, it'll give us a duplicate of those three as well. So that's another quite useful thing to know. So the other piece we wanted are these cross braces. We're just going to chuck a few of these on. You can see this engine here is actually detached at the moment. So we might need to just plonk one of these guys on so it's not floating in thin air. And then we'll just duplicate a few of these. We're probably not going to need quite so many, but if we just do a few extra, then we don't need to fly back and buy any more. We're just going to bring this back to my outpost lander and we'll do some building there. I don't know what <laughs> we've made happen here. I'm sure this is absolutely fine. So here we are back at the outpost builder. Whatever weird bugginess was going on with the ship seems to have fixed itself somewhat. I'll just show you inside the ship quickly so you can see how the sort of routing of it looks at the moment. Ignore these. This is just where I shoved all the corridors on the side because this is what we want to improve. This is the mess hall that we just added. The docker comes up through the floor here. To the front, you have the lower access to this cockpit. I'll just show you this. These are the stairs that I mentioned before. This is the two level cockpit. It's a really nice one. If we go around here, you can see we've got another door this side. Then we've got this annoying staircase that sits here that I don't really want to be here. So we're going to try and get rid of that. A little bit of a workshop here. The docker on top, which at least that is nice and easy to access and the workshop as well. And then if we go around here, this is how you get into all the other habs. So the game doesn't naturally let you really make loops without using corridors like this. So you kind of have to go all the way around here, around here. And this is going to take us in a big loop shape all the way around to the other hab on the other side of the ship. But we won't be able to complete that loop and walk back through to the mess hall, which is located just on the other side of 
this, but we can't get through there. As for the entrance, I quite like the positioning of this hatch to get in, so I think we'll try and keep the docker attached here. This will bring us up into this mess hall like this. If we can get rid of this ladder, then it means we'll just come up through the docker and then you can run straight into the cockpit down here and get straight to here. And then if you're coming in from boarding an enemy ship, then you'll be able to come in this way and run down here, but with this ladder gone. So we want to keep those two routes of access nice and simple. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is strip all of this down, get rid of all the stuff I don't want, and we're going to start with just a pile of a few pieces, and we're going to build a new ship completely from scratch. Whilst I do that, I'm just going to talk through what our goals are for this ship build so we have a bit of an end point in mind. We're going to do a Class B ship. We want it to have as high a grab jump range as sensibly possible. If we can, it'd be nice to have fuel capacity of 800, which basically allows you to go from one end of the galaxy to the other in one jump. If we can't have 800, we'll try and have as high as we can. We want the cargo to be around 5,000 base. Then with skills and boost, it's going to be up 6, 7,000, which should be more than enough for general use ship. Ideally, I'd like my crew capacity to be at least five or six. We want it to have the biggest reactor possible so we don't have to muck around with adding and reducing power into different things too much. I'm going to use the same weapons we already have on the existing ship, which are some very strong particle beams and missile launchers we'll talk about later. But I'd also like to add some sort of EM weapon onto it that we can use perhaps for disabling enemy ships. The other guns hit very hard and sometimes you just accidentally blow up ships when you're trying to disable them. So I wouldn't mind a third weapon that is used specifically for disabling enemy engines when they're just a little bit delicate. It needs to have a good shield generator and a strong hull of course. We want the mobility to be pretty good. The ship we're editing today at least before I shoved a load of spines and cross braces onto the side of it had a mobility of 65. That's a rating out of 100 which sounds quite bad but it was actually fine to fly around and could beat most things in combat. So I just want to make sure my mobility is 65 or higher and I think that will be fine. We want minimal ladders and a good flow. I'm not bothered about it being zero ladder but if we can make sure there's not ladders in annoying places and you don't have to use them just to go in between getting from the ground onto the ship and from enemy ships back onto a ship then that'll be fine. We want it to have all workbenches and research table available. And we also want to make sure there is a bed or beds in there that are relatively easy to access because I use the beds a lot. If you sleep in a bed, you get an XP boost, you get all your health back. So it's really useful just to be able to quickly run to a bed and have an hour's kip. So here we are with the ship completely stripped down to parts. I rather stupidly, the astute among you might have noticed when I put all the cross braces and spines on the side of my ship a minute ago, accidentally did deleted a bunch of the weapons on my ship so we've actually lost those so we'll have to rebuy those but it's not too much of a huge deal we do still have my missile launchers so that's what we've kept here we've got the four engines which we'll probably use for this ship not for definite but quite keen on reusing those you can see they're 33,000 credits a pop so pretty expensive we've got a couple of fuel tanks which will probably change there's only two of them here and that gives us 420 total fuel i wouldn't mind having a bit more than that as i mentioned earlier here's a little docker to go on top if we want to use reuse that. This is our shield generator. It's about as good as we can get for class B. That's a 30,000 credit shield gen. We'll definitely keep hold of that. This is our reactor. This is a class B reactor. You can see 39 power generated, piloting skill 3, starship design 4 needed. If we go to reactors here and scroll down to the bottom of class B, you can see this is the strongest one we can get. If we want more power than that, then we need to go up to class C. There's a 40 power one you can get a class C. We've also got a grav drive. This is a class B, 36 thrust, 180 health. Starship designed tier two, 25,000 credit grav drive here. I just want to double check this is the best we can get. So grav jump thrust, 36. Let's have a little look and see what other options there are there under grav drive. So keep in mind, because we're going to be using a class B reactor, we can only use parts up to and including class B. I couldn't use class C shields or weapons or grav drives because we're using a class B reactor. So these ones here, they're class C. That's no good. But you can see here we're back on class B, so we're all right. So I think we've already got the best one we can get. If we scroll down, it will seem to be weaker than that one there. And then the other pieces we kept for now are our landing gear. I'm not certain I'll reuse those, but they're pretty decent, so we will keep them to 
to hand for now. We've also got some cargo we may use. We've got our cross braces over here that we just went and bought, our spines over on this side. And then all we've got to start with in the middle for our build is this mess hall that you just saw me buy a minute ago. Cabot C4 bridge, which is a Nova Galactic bridge, the two story bridge we talked about, which will stick on there. I'm just going to keep the same landing bay at the bottom here because I liked how that looked up with the mess hall. And it's just got a piece of structural on the back that just closes it off quite nicely. So what I'm going to do first of all is build up the structure of the ship in terms of the habs and corridors. So the areas inside the ship that you can walk around and access on foot. We've currently got the mess hall here. This is connecting up to the landing bay, which you saw me use a little while ago. It's going to come up that ladder into the bottom of the mess hall. You can tell where the paths are going to be or can be because they've got these little arrows here that we mentioned earlier. So we've got a little arrow here. You'll see if we go underneath, there's arrows along here. So you could have that ladder come up wherever you liked in the bottom of this area, but we wanted to come up where it did earlier. So we're just going to put that right back where it was. Again, same principle for the bridge. We've got these ones in the middle that need to connect up. They're going to connect up with little arrows on the mess hall, and that's going to give us a doorway between here and here. Now, one of the things I mentioned I wanted to avoid was having this ladder coming up right in front of the cockpit there, hopefully not having one at all in this line of sight. And if we put another hab on top of this, then it's just going to create a ladder going up into that. So what we're going to need to do is use these hab spines. You can see these don't have little arrows on the top. They've only got them on the ends. There's not one on the bottom either. So if we place this on top of here, connect it up with this doorway, and then grab a, another one as well, this should create a doorway going through into this big long corridor, and it'll come out here wherever we like. Now, what I'm going to quickly do is just buy the different habs that I want to use for this build. So we said earlier we want to have all of the available workbenches. So for that, we're going to use the Stroud Workshop. This has all of the benches in it, including the research lab. It is missing the pharmaceutical lab, but we'll see if we can fit an infirmary or a science lab in, and that should cover that. So that's going to cover our workbenches. As for sleeping arrangements, I wanted the Deimos 2 by one all-in-one berth. So we're going to grab one of those for now. If I feel like we've got space and it works with the shape of the ship, we might consider using the 3 by one but the 2 by one is going to be okay for now. I then also want the Deimos living quarters 2 by one so we'll grab one of those. Again, if we feel like a 3 works better, we might try out the 3 by one And then I wouldn't mind shoving a captain's quarters in there at some point. I think they look quite nice. The Teo one, I wanted to try out. So we're going to find the Teo one. It's got these up and lower ones. We're going to find the 2 by ones The mid for now, that should be fine and we'll see if we need a top or a bottom one depending on where it goes it probably is going to go on the top of the ship but we'll just grab the mid and then we can adjust that if we need to so these are the things that we want to slap onto this as the core of our ship in some way and what we just need to do is think about where the doorways are going to be so we want to have our docker on top of the ship and that's going to be where you enter and exit the ship when you've docked with a space station or an enemy ship i also wouldn't mind having a control station because you get extra crew stations with that and it looks quite nice so we're going to grab one of those. We'll use the Stroud one for now and see how that looks. So we've basically got five different hab modules that we want to try and connect to this somehow. So to keep it symmetrical, we're probably going to have one on top and then the other one stacked up below. We'll see how we can make that work, but also keep it in mind the routing of these corridors. So we'll take the captain's quarters for now and just shove it up here. And what we need to do is if we want to avoid having ladders coming out the bottom of this, we need to make sure there's no connecting points underneath it here. So these other habs need to go to one side of it rather than if we shove something down here we're gonna have a ladder going up and down between those two modules also if we want to guarantee that there's a doorway between two points like this we can't just chuck these modules on like this what we're gonna have to do is chuck corridors in to force those doorways if i use these cross braces then it will always force a doorway between those it'll always have access to that point if i didn't put that then it wouldn't work so if we put our workshop here and our control station over here, that's going to mean that we're going to be able to access this workshop very easily from the main entryway to the ship. We're going to be able to access the bed in the captain's quarters to sleep very easily if we want to. And then the control station, you don't really need to access, but it kind of feels like it makes sense to have it near the main part of the ship, near the bridge. Then we've got the all-in-one and we've also got the living quarters. So these don't really matter so much where they are, but we do need to get them in somewhere. And again, we need to kind of follow the rules of using these 
companionways, these spines, these corridors to hook things up. It does make your ship a bit wider or a bit longer, but it's nice to have the doorways where you want them. By the way, I couldn't attach something to here. See this, this point here. This isn't a four-way door connector. It wouldn't make a passageway going out to the left and the right here. You can see this doesn't have a little arrow on it. This thing here has a little arrow. You could have a doorway there. This isn't going to be some sort of four-way crossroad. That's just an attachment point for fixing things. It's not going to be a route through. So I'm just going to select all of this and move it forward a little bit. By the way, when you do select all, that selects everything that's attached to the thing that you've clicked on. So by selecting all here, it's going to select this and move it around. It's not going to select all these little bits I've got off to the side. That's a great way, by the way, of finding unattached modules. If you've got the unattached module error and you can't find it, do select all and just move the ship over and you'll see the unattached module left behind. So here's our living quarters and we've got our all-in-one berth here and we could either put them on like this. We know we'd have doorways now going between those two pieces because the only way of accessing these areas. The problem is, however, if I decided I wanted to link them up here so you could kind of go between if I put a spine or one of these corridors here running between these two like this, that would guarantee doorways here. But what the game would probably then do is it would shut off off either this doorway here or this doorway here for some reason it doesn't really like having loops so it would close one of those and you'd end up walking to here and then if you wanted to get into this hab you'd have to walk all the way back around round here, round here, and like that, which would be very, very annoying. So I think what we'll do, rather than having this have a full loop, because if we wanted to have this fully loop, we'd basically end up having to move these further down, shove another spine in like this, attach these here, and then have the corridor go in between. And we just end up with a very, very long ship. It's probably going to get too long for the game to even let you build, and, it, and it's getting a bit silly. Of course, you can build them out sideways as well, because of the nature of this bridge, it kind of looks a bit weird if you start building out too much from the side so we're going to just make these so they're a bit of a dead end we'll just delete that I don't think we're going to need too many more or any more of those and this is going to give us our all-in-one and our living quarters at the end so I noticed something in the edit I just wanted to come back and clarify quickly at the end so these spines here these were initially put in because I was intending to loop this if we'd put the corridor going between these two then these two are necessary because if you didn't have them the game would close off one of these doorways like I just said and you'd have to go a long way around to get into both areas but because we've decided not to actually connect these two points here it does mean we don't actually need to have these two spines here so we could actually delete these two move these down and move these down and that would be absolutely fine because these aren't connected to anything else there's only one way into these so this doorway would have to be a doorway because there's no other way to access this and this would have to be a doorway because there's no other way to access this this one up here needs to stay here to avoid the ladder situation but I just wanted to clarify in case you're confused as to why these were left in in the build I did end up removing them uh, once I was finished but if you wanted you could leave them in purely for aesthetic purposes but I decided to take them out so what I wouldn't mind doing now is having a little look inside the ship and just checking that this all looks how I want it to look and we're happy with the pathing the routing throughout the ship now annoyingly you can't just you know go into a preview mode and walk around you can only zoom in that far so what we're going to have to do is make this ship technically flyable so we can save it go inside have a look and then make adjustments so i'm just going to chuck all of these parts back on the ship basically to make it flyable it needs to hit certain requirements you can see if i pull up my errors here we may need to make sure all of the modules are attached it needs a grav drive it needs a docker so we're just going to make sure the ship meets the minimum requirements in order to be able to save and i'll put my docker on the top as well so we can see how that's going to look coming down through the captain's quarters in fact what i think i'll do which might be a bit better is to have some some sort of single room just behind the captain's quarters that will attach here and then we're not going to have a ladder coming down through the captain's quarters because when you have doorways coming into places or hatches or ladders or whatever they are going to delete certain things that are in that room to make space for that so if that comes down in the middle of the captain's quarters we might find that it gets rid of the bed or the table or something that we actually wanted there so we're just going to find a one by one we've been using what well, we've been using stroud damos we've got a 
Teo captain's quarter. So maybe we'll find the like a one by one Teo and see how that looks. We've got the Teo companion ways. Let's just find a mid uh, storeroom or companion way. Well, let's go for just a companion way for now and we'll see how that looks. We'll put the docker on the top here. You can see this has got a little arrow on top. So we know we can connect that there. And that's our docking point. Everything else, we're just going to chuck this on wherever it will let us just so we can make these ships savable. So here we are. We've stuck everything back together. You see, we've got rid of all of the errors. The one last one we had to get rid of was max length. You see, if I move this one back, we're going to get an error there. That's max length, width or height exceeded. So we now know this is as long as our ship can be. So we haven't got too much wiggle room, but we do have one space here behind this hab. But this is fine. We can confirm this. It doesn't matter that you have warnings. You can just do B and accept. And we can now go inside and see how how all of this looks. So here we are back in the mess hall. We can see the entrance way is the same as we saw it earlier. It's got a nice layout, this one. If we walk around, it's got a little room off to the side here, lots of decoration. If we go around this way, we've got a little kitchen, so you can do some cooking at the cooking station if you want. If we go forward, you can see it's a nice easy route here from where we enter from the ground level into sorry if i just open that in your face i'm sure it's fine so if we go into the bottom of the cockpit here we can go upstairs and see our lovely outpost from here we can walk around and go down this corridor and then do our best to get past vasco uh, so here we are back at the top of the ship with Vasco removed out of the way. You can see if we go down this corridor from the top of the cockpit, we go all the way back into these captain quarters where we've got a nice bed and all the rest of it. And then if we go into the back here, this is where we should see the ladder for the docker. Yeah, so this is where we're going to come down from space stations or enemy ships that we've boarded. Again, look, you can see and just go straight through to the corridor there, provided that Vasco isn't just sitting in the way. You can see if we decided to put this docker right right on top of the captain's area like we could have done it would have come down here and I think that would have where well, would have definitely got rid of this table and chairs it probably would have got rid of the nav console as well um and just would have wiped out half of this so I think it looks a lot better having the extra room at the back for it so if we want to see the lower decks of the ship then we can come back here and head down via the cockpit and then we're going to have the two side areas coming off of the main mess hall here you can see we go through the little corridor and we're going to have the control station area with all the computer terminals looks pretty good and then into the back we've then got this extra one this is the all-in-one or the living quarters uh, ignore that that's just a bit of extra slapped on the side so this has got a bunch of beds in it for the crew and then this is where we decided not to link up the two so if we had put a spine going between them then it would have got rid of well this toilet here doesn't have a door hidden behind it so if we want to go into the other side of the ship we do have to go back here and round but I don't really mind that we're not realistically going to be running between those two areas very often if we want to do workshop building we're actually just going to walk back is that a toilet no it's a table if we want to do workshop building we're actually just going to walk back this way and you can see we're straight into the workshop area here where we can do all of our crafting we've got industrial we've got research we've got spacesuit and we've got a weapon bench there and then if we go into the back room we've got the living quarters here so the only thing we're missing at the moment is the pharmaceutical bench i'm going to leave it for now i'm not too bothered about it if we we wanted to put it in we could replace this with it this is not really do anything other than for aesthetics or for you know rp or whatever but this is quite a nice room so i think i'm gonna keep it and i don't really do much pharmaceutical crafting the only thing i tend to craft is loads of amp every now and again i just go and do that at one of my outposts where it's a bit easier so i'd really suggest doing that if you're able to do a little test once you've got your habs and stuff in place because it can be a lot messier than that when you don't know what's going to happen with the doorways with the ladders if you've got a particularly complicated build if you don't have all the spare parts you need available to shove everything on to get rid of the error warnings like this you can always just buy the very cheapest things that you need to to get rid of those errors and have a look inside and then you can get rid of them and replace them again so i'm just going to take everything off that's not going to be there very quickly and then we're going to start gradually building up all of the other parts of the ship we need and then starting to add some structural elements for decoration and also for where we're going to attach our weapons so we've stripped everything back now and we can start connecting the bits that we need to bring it all together so we might as well get our reactor and grav drive in place for the time being we've got quite a lot of 
space in the middle here where we can shove stuff. So I'm probably just going to try and shove the reactor in underneath here. You can see we've even got a space underneath this bit of structural gear here. So we can have the reactor really tucked in out the way. Again, the grav drive, we can do the same with and just chuck that all the way back here next to that. These don't have any doorway connectors, so they're not going to have any effect on all of the surrounding habs. I'll get rid of some of these cross braces now. I don't think we're realistically going to be using them at this stage, but I'll leave a couple just in case. Now we've got quite a bit more space we can fill up here. I quite like the idea of trying to cover most of this with different structural elements to make it look nice. It's going to be a very weird, long, thin ship, so we'll probably try and bring the size of it out a little bit with some wider structural elements. So while I figure out exactly how the back of the ship is going to work, I think we're just going to try and shove the cargo on here and maybe work down from the front a little bit, and then we'll have an idea of how the back is actually going to look. In terms of cargo, we could reuse these things. They don't look too bad. See, they fit in quite nicely. So I might put some of these on. We don't really need quite as many as we've got. I'm kind of tempted to ditch two of them. And then we're going to gain a bit of maneuverability as a trade-off for losing a bit of cargo. So let's just see how much cargo we get. If we put four of these on and then get rid of another two and then delete these two. That's going to give us 4,000 base. It's slightly under what I was thinking, but with our crew bonuses, I think that might be enough. We can always add on a couple of smaller cargo things if we want. And then I just want to have a look and see if we can find some nice structural pieces that can go down to make all this look a bit nicer and maybe to go on top here as well. So if we open up the structural menu, because we're at the outpost builder, we have all sorts of stuff available to us. So we're just going to scroll through here and see if we can find stuff that looks like it might work quite nicely. Uh, on the top there. So I think what's going to work best on this kind of long, thin ship on this part is going to be the Stroud cowling that we've got here. I just want to see how that looks if we bring that forward and connect that directly up with the bridge and maybe move the cargo back. And it's kind of a little bit janky. So this, by the way, isn't going to be an area you can go inside of. This is purely deck triv. It's just to give the ship some structure and some shape. I think what I might do is just do select all on the main ship here. Click on the left stick to do color. And I just want to make the whole ship the same color as it gives you a bit of a better idea of how you're getting on I find. There we go. So everything's got the same color scheme now. So this helps you see how things might line up. You can see the storage stuff looks a bit weird compared to the bridge in these colors. So I'm just going to bring that out and see how the cowling looks next to it. By the way, when you're trying to add ship modules, rather than just clicking in empty space and doing add like this, you can click directly on the blue nodes and bring up the menu and it'll only then show you items that can be attached to these points. On PC, you just click on them to do that. On console, you hold down left and right trigger and then press A. And this this menu now is just going to show me stuff that can connect here. So it's quite a nice way if you want to just quickly scroll through and see what might look good against a certain point like the back of the bridge here. So I think for the time being we're going to go with the long piece of cowling here and the cargo behind and if I want to just dupe that I can just click Y on that piece then press Y again and flip it and we can make the same adjustments to the other side here. Now again we're just going to find some more structural pieces here that we think are going to work on this slightly lower level just to bring the width of the ship out a bit so it's not just a big long weird flat sausage thing so we'll go back into our menus here and have a look we've been using a lot of nova stuff so we might find that nova galactic is going to work a little better with some of the pits we've got obviously not all the modules inside are nova but the bridge is nova and some of the other pieces are this is stroud cowling on there so i want to have a look at how the stroud stuff looks as well so i think what we're going to go for in the end here is the nova cowling we've got this running down the side of the ship i think that will do for now these are all based off of the same piece you see if i select this one piece here the nova cowling 2 lpf if i select that you see at the bottom it says next previous variant if i press on my d-pad it goes between the three different variations so that's what we've got going on here we have this end piece then three middle pieces and then the opposite end piece down the back and again what we can do here is if we select all of these pieces by tapping on those we've got this section all highlighted as one now is we can then press y and duplicate that whole section of the ship and plonk that over here we can't unfortunately flip it as one for some reason so i have to select each bit individually and flip it around but it does save you a tiny bit of time so it's starting to take a bit of better shape now looking like greeny mark ii or sort of white and gray at the moment i'm just going to do the colors again to keep it all uniform and we can get rid of a couple of these pieces that we no longer need so we've got the hab structure the internal structure of our ship done we've got the attachment point at the top the docker we've got the landing bay at the bottom done we've got the bridge done and we've got a little bit of structural and decoration around it we've got 
cargo on there as well. We still need to do weapons. We need to attach our shield generator and the engines is going to be the other big one and the fuel tanks. Just figuring out how we can get the engines on here that don't look too rubbish. So while we're trying to figure out our engine situation, we'll just do the shield because I know I'm going to keep this shield generator. It's the Warden SG400 Shield Gen Class B. Requires ship design for it's very heavy mass 71, but it gives you a lot of shield health. You can see that's 1125 shield max health. If we have a look at our shield list here, you can see that that is the highest rated class B1 that we can get. It gives us the most shield that we can have on a class B ship. So we're definitely going to stick with this shield generator. It costs you 30,000 credits normally, and we'll just chuck it on top here for the time being. So I'm not convinced at the moment that these fuel tanks are going to work for us, despite them being very efficient weight wise, I think because of the double height of them and the shape, it's not really going to look very good with the sort of shape of ship that we've gone with. So I want to see if we can try and make these engines work with it because it's going to save us a little bit of money and they also have very good thrust and very good maneuvering thrust. So I've managed to rejig the engines into a way that I think I'm relatively happy with. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing ship, but I don't think it looks absolutely terrible. And we managed to get these engines we wanted into place. We could do with a few extra bits of structural stuff for some filler, but we do now have almost all of the main component parts of the ship connected together. What we can do now is we can get rid of these hab spines. We're not going to need them anymore. We can get rid of our cross braces. So by the way, while we're just talking about engines, you can see here that they have a power rating. I do cover this in my shipbuilding tips video, but just to reiterate, you see these have a max power of three on each engine. That means that if you see the bars on the top left there, the bars that you assign power to when you're in flight, they have a maximum capacity of 12 bars. So what that means is when you're placing engines, you can have, if they have a power of three, you can have a maximum of four of those because that's going to be 12 power. I couldn't have another one of these engines because that would take us to 15 and it would give us an error for doing that. The same also applies to weapons when you're placing them on your ship. You can see these missile launchers here. They have a power of three. Again, I could have four of these missile launchers, but you might find some engines or weapons in the game that have different power. You can see these have two, so you could actually have six of these small engines on your ship. Some of the weapons in the game have power of even up to four, so you can only have three. So it's just something to keep in mind. You could also have a mix and match of different engines. If I wanted, I could get rid of one of these and put another three power engine in. As long as you don't go above that max power of 12. As for landing gear, there's basically a certain amount of thrust that you need to have depending on the mass of your ship. You can see different landing gear have different thrust values. These have a lander thrust of four. But if we open up my landers here, you can see there's ones with two, with one, and all sorts of different stats. So the ones we've got here are actually pretty powerful compared to most of the ones you'll find on this list here. These are the Nova Galactic NG20, and they're only available from the ship technician at Nova Galactic, which is on a new homestead on Titan. So we're going to try and reuse these if we can, and we're just going to see if this is enough to carry our ship, which hopefully it will be. So those landing thrusters seem to be just fine. You see the only errors we got at the moment is unattached modules and doesn't have a fuel tank. So the unattached module is this missile launcher here. And the only thing missing at the moment is, I mean, we haven't done our weapons, of course, but we also need to put a fuel tank on. So I'm just going to have a little look to see if there's any space where we can shove some in. We've got one space under here we could put a fuel tank. So if we hold down both triggers and click on that attachment point in that little gap and then go over to our fuel tanks, it will show us the ones we can actually fit on there, which doesn't look like it's going to be anything much use. I mean, we can get a 210 under there, but we'd still have to attach some other ones elsewhere. And if we wanted to hit 800, uh, that's going to be pretty tough. We could try and go for 600. We can have one of those there and then you know, shove another couple under here, I think would be fine. I don't think it's going to get angry about them. No, we've got no errors at the moment. Um, just warnings, but that does look a bit rubbish. So I don't think we will. Uh, I don't think we will go for that. I'm tempted to leave that one there, though, for the time being. And we might just try and shove another couple of small ones on the side. So we've currently got two ten. These attachment points here, these are square ones. So these are going to be for weapons only, by the way. So we won't actually be able to hook uh, fuel tanks or structural pieces onto this. These can only take weapons. This one up here, this circle one, this could take other points. If we wanted to stick a fuel tank right on uh, the top of our ship, we would be able to do that. Uh, so what we've got here is just a selection of different fuel tanks. We're going to see where we can sort of jam these onto the ship in a vaguely aesthetic way that gives us a decent amount of fuel. So 
this little one here, this does 300 fuel per tank for quite a small tank, considering this one here does 400 and it's absolutely enormous. Uh, this one does 300 and it's a lot smaller. It's mass 44, this is mass 50, so it's a little bit lighter as well. And I quite like the idea of maybe we have one of these on each side. That's going to be 600. We're a bit shy of the 800 I wouldn't have minded to hit, but I think um, it might be a little bit overkill. The other option for this, without rejigging stuff around, is to shove them up here. But I think that's a much better point to have uh, weapons attached rather than uh, your fuel tanks right at the front of the ship where you're going to get shot all the time. So if we duplicate and flip this and chuck some on the other side, I don't think that's too bad. And then we've got 600 fuel. We can get rid of these ones that we don't need. And then we should have all our errors gone. And we just got warnings about weapons. So we'll just shove the weapons on we want to use. And there's a couple of little cosmetic things to finish up at the very end. I quite like having the missile launchers on top because it just adds a little bit of height to what is quite a sort of flat pancake thing as you kind of end up with when you're going for a, a no ladder or a limited ladder build. So I think we'll put that there. I don't think we'd be able to bring that up any higher because I think if we put a piece of cowling or anything on here, then I think it's going to interfere with the docker that we got on top because obviously that is for connecting to other ships when you want to board them or space stations. Um, and if you've got a big old piece of structural component in the way then you won't be able to do that if you didn't have the docker on the top you can get dockers that are side dockers or different areas of the ship so you would be able to have a bit more going on on top if you wanted i think it would probably get angry if we did this and made this even taller yep docker module needs to be on an outside edge of the ship so that's a bit tall you can see that would be um somewhat awkward it's interesting though that it does allow you a little bit of height to build with there which is quite nice I've just chuck this radiator which is just a decorative piece on top these are only three power, so we could have one more of them, but I've been happy with three of those on my other ship, so we can stick with those for now. The other guns that I wanted to use are the much-renowned Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projector, which we can have six of. They're a max power of two. They're a very powerful particle beam weapon. They do hull and shield damage, and they've got a massive range on them as well. So we're going to buy six of these, which are pretty expensive, and then we're going to lump them onto our ship somewhere. You can see if I hadn't deleted them off of this ship earlier on at the beginning of the video, we would have saved ourselves uh, a good chunk of change there. So we can slap these onto any of these points with the little square connector. If we're not particularly happy with how they look on there, there are certain like weapon mounting things you can put onto the blue connectors so we could find this and we could attach some sort of like weapon mounts you see this thing gives us two different weapon mounting points i'm not sure we could use the lower one we could it looks a bit weird though because it's kind of squashed in there so we could put that on the um the upper weapon mount something like that maybe we could have one under the under the wing the sort of wing we slap that under there and then maybe do we have a third one either on top of here, I think, or maybe under the wing as well. I think that can probably just go underneath here. Now we can try and chuck these over on the other side in the same sort of pattern. And there we go, we've got our six particle beam weapons attached. You can see up in the top left there. Uh, then if we want to assign those to a certain slot, we can go here, open this tab, move over to weapons. You see we've got the missile launchers assigned to slot two. If we go to slot zero, we can set that to the auto projectors. You can see in the top left, it's now made that appear on our little list of power bars. These missile launchers, by the way, these are the Atlatl 280A missile launchers, which are pretty powerful. There are slightly more powerful ones you can get, but I think they do get a bit bigger and have higher power. So I think we're going to stick with the ones we've got. These are the 280Bs that we would be able to put on if we wanted. They've got a max power of four. But you can see they're a bit big for this kind of design. Those missiles are just going to smash into the back of the cockpit, which probably isn't great. So they do do a bit more damage if you wanted. You could use those. But I'm quite happy with the ones uh, we've been using. And this weapon setup I've been using on the other ship on very hard difficulty. And it's been ripping through pretty much everything that you come across. What I said I wanted to add on as well though was some sort of em weapon to try and make disabling ships a little bit easier because occasionally these weapons are just too powerful uh, and they blow up ships before you can capture them so we're just going to try and stick on some sort of em weapon here i haven't really tested them out so we're just going to pop one on and we'll give it a whirl when, when we're done and see how it gets on so what we're looking for here basically you can see where it says hull and shield damage on the left here we're looking for electromagnetic damage there's so many weapons to go through um so we're just going to scroll through and then see what we can find find ones if it has a high starship design skill 
if it has a high cost then it's probably pretty good so this one does 48 electromagnetic damage that's 31,000. that's pretty good let's see if we can find any others and compare them another one here does 47 so slightly less and is a lot cheaper this one does 58, but it's got quite a lower fire rate and it's also class C. You can see we wouldn't be able to use that on this ship. So we need to go back up to the class B here. So these are our two options here. They look pretty much identical, I think. It's the Firebolt 4000 uh, and then the Nullifier 1750, which is about three times the price. There's not a massive amount of difference between these other than just the fire rate increase that you get on the Nullifier 750. And one more point of difference damage although it does have slightly less mass which could be beneficial if you want to boost your mobility i think we're just going to stick with the budget option for now and we'll see how we get on though because it seems much better value at just 11k uh, and it's not going to be a primary weapon for the ship as we mentioned these have a max power of three so we could have up to four of them i'm just going to put two on for now and i think we'll see how we get on with that when we do some testing with this ship again if we go to press start now on xbox and then we go over to the weapons tab which is actually already on go down to unassigned and we can assign the suppressor to that third slot. So there we go. For the first time in this whole ship build, you can see it actually says nominal down in the bottom right. So we've got a cargo of 4,120. That's a bit less than we were targeting, but quite close. We've got a max crew of six, which is spot on. We've got a jump range of 25 light years, which is pretty decent. We've got mobility of 79, which is actually a lot better than my last ship, despite this being bigger because it has less cargo, which weighs a ton. Uh, it's actually a lot more mobile. And we've got 600 grav fuel as well which is also pretty respectable so i don't think the ship's looking too bad it's very long and thin a bit like my last one but um i think that's kind of the vibe we're going for we've seen the interior of it already and what i might do is just add a couple of little tiny cosmetic things on and then we'll take it out for a spin so the only things I wanted to add on was a couple of windows or portholes. And the only real place we can do that is kind of on the back here. I mean, we could have them here underneath. It'd be a bit of a weird view, but you'd be able to look out and see um, the grav drive. But I might just put some there for the minute and see how they look. You can also put them on the floor, by the way. If we went to structural here, there's like portholes you can put um, on the floor so you can look down out the bottom of the ship. I'm not sure there's much value in that and like i mentioned earlier keep in mind that'll get rid of stuff so if we start slamming them onto the workshop here then we might lose workbenches from it um, for the sake of a porthole so in fact let's not put them on the middle bit at all so let's just shove a porthole on the back here and another one on the back here these are just sort of cosmetic rooms at the back so it doesn't matter too much if we lose um, a bed or something from the back i'm kind of curious just how these look if we put one here i don't think we'll leave them because i don't want to remove every, anything from our workshop but i just want to have a little look through these portholes and see um, how it looks when we're flying around and you can look across and see the grav drive so a couple of portholes there i don't think we need any on the bottom in any of the other areas might just shove one on the top of the captain's quarters here so we can have a look out the top there see how that looks and i think other than that we are pretty much done so we're just going to temporarily rename our ship as it's no longer green. So it shouldn't really be called Greeny. And let's save our changes and take a little look around inside and then we'll take it up into space. You stay there, Vasco. So we won't do a full walk around as the only things we've changed here were the portholes that we've added. So let's just have a quick look out, out of those and we'll check them again when we're in space. We put some on the side in some weird position here, didn't we? Okay, so we can see out there. Oh, that's kind of cool being able to see the gra grav drive. I'm just interested to see if that gets rid of any workbenches around there. Here's another porthole at the back. I think these are quite nice. We'll definitely leave those. Vasco! <laughs> so here we are. We can have a little look at our ship's power while we're just chilling up here we can have a look at how much power we've got to play with here so we've got one spare at the moment we've got lots of power in our em so my idea was i wouldn't normally be using those so we'd have max power in my particle beams which i've got on this button at the moment these are these ones then we've got max power on the missiles which are here and then if we wanted to put some power into our em weapons then those are going to be on this button here and we can fire those once those get to 100 also keep in mind i have this skill here and neutronic fusion which gives you extra power from your reactor so if you get that leveled up you can get an extra five units of power which i will be doing uh, once i gain some more levels i've only got one at the moment and your crew can also give you extra points of power as well so despite us having a 39 react we actually have 41 points to spend which as you can see it gives us max shield 
max missiles, max particle beams, one in our EM, and then almost max engine. We've lost two from engine, so not too bad. If we take a couple out of shields, we can max engine. We go up to full speed, gets up to 180, just over 180 if we boost we get up to what four five hundred six hundred nearly seven hundred nearly seven hundred and then it turns super quick so the mobility is actually really good despite being quite a uh, big ship we use our thrusters we can turn around lickety split so we're just going to fly to serpentis and have a scrap you can see here we are on very hard difficulty so we'll see uh, how this goes Serpentis, by the way, is a great system for getting ship combat practice, for farming XP, credits, items, stealing ships. If you fly to pretty much any planet or moon in this system, then nine times out of ten, you're going to get attacked by uh, a bunch of Varun. So it's a great place to go and easily find a combat. So there we go. You can see we've been attacked pretty quickly. First time coming to Serpentis, we can straight away start firing at this eulogy with our particle beams and it's getting absolutely destroyed before we even locked onto it and tried our missiles. Switch onto this guy. We can hit him pretty hard. We'll see if we can take out his engines. What am I... We try and shoot him with my... Um... Oh, there we go. I think we... Uh... No, he's still got some engine left. If we shoot these, the thing is, if I shoot with my missiles now, let's see how much damage that does. There we go. Fire the missiles at him. It's going to do a whole lot of damage. And a burst from the particle beams there uh, blows him up very easily. And we actually managed to level up as well. So you can see took down those two pretty easily. We'll just fly to another system and fight another couple just so you can see it happening again. So we'll just try and take out this little ship here and then we'll try and disable on the other two i think we're being attacked with this time looks like we've got a few so we'll get rid of this one quickly these do hit pretty hard on very hard difficulty so we want to try and deal with a couple of them as quickly as possible yeah we do have another ship behind us as well so let's just blow this one up quickly and then we'll try and spin around drop a repair See if we can get behind this ship and take its engines out. You can see we can get past it and turn really quickly. I mean, this ship is um, pretty badly damaged, it has to be said at the moment. Let's just get out of the way for it. Takes me out again. And I think we might just blow this up before this ship actually kills us. There we go. But you see, we're able to handle ourselves pretty well. We only slowed that down and took load damage because we were trying to disable this ship. But um, when you have three coming at once, it is pretty tough. You see, we have filled up our cargo there. So I might be tempted to add a little bit more cargo onto the ship. If we actually um, hold down B, we can stand up. And we'll have a little look at what our cargo is. And I just want to have a look at the... God damn it. At the portholes whilst we're in space. So you can see my cargo capacity is five and a half thousand. I'm at 5,900. So I had quite a bit I brought over from my old ship, but we're not too wide of the mark. So I can either offload a little bit of cargo or we can just stick an extra little cargo container in. And we've got this nice gap under here. So I think I'm quite tempted to just chuck uh, a cargo box in under there. And we'll get rid of those two portholes down there. I think Vasco's not letting us get to the captain's quarters. So we're just going to have to go and we'll have a little look out the back portholes. This is where I think I will put the cargo. It's a nice little space for it. Space for it. We can get rid of those portholes. We don't really need those. But we can keep these nice ones here at the back. So just to show you in the workshop quickly here, we didn't actually lose any workbenches from placing this porthole. We've still got all of the ones we need here. So it's just replaced some shelving, I think, like this that used to be there. But we are going to get rid of that porthole anyway. And here's the final one in the living quarters. So we can just chuck some cargo under here. If we wanted, we could put some shielded cargo down here to help you smuggle stuff. I'm not too bothered about that. So I think what we'll do is just maybe put this. It's kind of not the right shape but you're never going to see it and this does 950 which will take us up to that 5k base we were looking for these other ones do a bit more but as you can see the mass is a big jump up 250 and 312 so i think for the time being we'll just shove this one down here and that should do us just fine i might do a bit of tweaking in future to these em weapons i'm not sure if that is working out for me i need a bit more practice with those you can see that adding this cargo hold underneath has dropped my mobility from 79 to 
67. It's dropped my jump range by one light year and it's added on quite a bit to the mass. So it is a bit of a compromise. I'm not sure if I'll keep it or not, but we'll just chuck it down there for now. And if I can be bothered to empty out all the junk in my ship, then maybe I'll strip that down and we'll take the extra mobility. So that's going to be everything for today. I'm by no means a creative genius when it comes to building ships. As you can see, it's pretty basic, but it does have a nice flow inside. And I think it just shows you an example of the whole process of building ship. Uh, which if that interests you, which hopefully it does because you've watched all the way to the end of the video. If you've got any questions about anything in this, then please drop them in the comments below. I will try and answer them or other smarter people will try and answer them as well. And I'll put all the information on the build I've done today and other links like the Reddit links down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. It really helps me out. We're nearly 100,000 subscribers on YouTube now, which would be fantastic to hit if we can by the end of the year. Thank you all for your support. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.